episode we're going to put this block heater into this 2006 Honda Civic so let's get our tools ready <laughs> No pats around, especially if there's coolant around, so the dog's gonna go. So come here, come on. All right, let's go back. Come here. All right. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drain the coolant. So I'm gonna open this piece here, and then there's a drain plug underneath the car, just under here. And I'm gonna lift the car up a little bit and open that drain and drain the fluid. Safety precaution, before you drain your coolant, make sure that your car is cooled down before you open it because it's a high pressure system and if you open this when it's hot, you could have steam coming out, it can burn, it could be very dangerous. So let it cool down before you open it and you should be fine. Okay, so the drain plug for the coolant is right under the car. It is right there, that white plug. So I'm just going to turn that Put the pan underneath and the coolant is going to come out. There we go. Okay, so one thing I'm going to tell you is that I'm not going to flush the coolant today because it's the middle of winter. I don't have a hose to reach from the house to the garage. So I'm just going to drain it and put new fluid in, which is not perfect, but in the summertime I can do a proper flush. Right now I'm just getting this uh, block heater installed. So the next thing we're going to do is take out this bolt, which is a placeholder for the block heater. It's really hard to see. It's on the front of the block. Son of a bitch. Ah! Ah! Knuckle savers. Well, you either got it loose or you broke your tool. <gasps> it's loose! It's freaking loose, man! I'm now taking it out. It's coming off. And there's more coming out. So next I'm going to put the Teflon tape on, per the instructions. And since I'm screwing it in this way, I need to put the Teflon tape in reverse. So I'm going to carefully go around. And I want the last little bit to just end off right there. Teflon tape is on. This part came with a little washer. Put that on. I've got the Teflon tape and the washer on. And I'm going to carefully screw it into place. I want to make sure that I have the threads lined up so I don't wreck the threads. So I've got it in. I'm going to give it a little shake to make sure the threads are correctly lined up. Feels good. I'm going to do as much by hand as I can. I'm going to continue with my socket wrench. I've got a 24 mil socket which I had to pick up at the hardware store just for this one job because I don't have one in my kit. I'm going to tighten it but not all the way because I'm going to use my torque wrench to get it to the right specification. Alright, the next step is to use my torque wrench to tighten it up to the right specifications. So I grabbed the instructions. So I couldn't find the torque spec on this manual that came with the part. 
So I looked up online and I found a Honda manual that says the torque spec for the block heater is 44 foot-pounds. So I'm going to do a bit of math here to figure out which torque wrench I should use. I have two torque wrenches I could use. This one and this one. This one goes for higher ranges, this is for lower ranges. I could use either one of them. This one goes down to 20 and the setting I need to use is 44. But the lower ranges of a torque wrench are as accurate, so I'm going to choose this one because it goes down to a lower range and 44 will be more in the middle of this one. This one works in inch pounds, so I have to convert 44 foot pounds to inch pounds. That comes to 528, so I'm going to set that now. And tighten. There we go, done. When you're finished using your torque wrench, lower it down to its lowest setting because it's a precision instrument and putting it in storage at its lowest setting will maintain its accuracy over time. The next step is to install the wire into the block heater and run the wire to the front of the car. I'm not gonna film that because it's very straightforward. I recommend getting a housing for the wire and also using cable ties to attach it to the car as you run it along to the front of the car. Now you can see I've got the wire installed run to the front of the car and there's a cable tie attaching it to that point right there. Last step is to refill the coolant system and bleed the system of all air bubbles. So there's a valve underneath the car, that little white valve. I'm going to close that first. Then I'm going to fill the coolant system uh, from the radiator cap. There are a couple hoses up here I'm going to work by hand to get as many air bubbles out as I can. Then I'm going to start the car and use the cabin heating system to cycle the fluid through the system which should help bleed the system of all air bubbles and I'm going to film that as best I can and show you how I do it. Start carefully filling the radiator with coolant. This is my second bottle of coolant. You should read up on how much coolant you need before you start the job or just get two of these big jugs. There are two hoses under the radiator cap that you can work with your hands to get air bubbles out. If your car is running, be careful of the fan running at the front of the car. Remove some coolant so you can take out the funnel. Start the car and turn the cabin heat on high. Watch the level of the coolant. If it drops down, you can add some. And if it gets high, you can take some off. The engine was running for a while with the heat on full in the cabin. I was filling this up. Uh, I was also squeezing these poses here carefully and keeping my hands away from the fan there to get air bubbles out. So now the level here is fine and the level in my reservoir is at minimum so it's safe to cap this off and finish this job. And that's it, we're all done.